He's admitting, he says, oh, I lost by a whisker. So what was the point? Like, what's the point of any of it? You lost in 2020? Seriously? I mean, what are we even doing anymore? Then you're a loser. Then you're, you're a loser. You just lost. Then you lost to Joe Biden. You deserve to be charged. If, you, if he admits that he lost, then that actually vindicates the DOD, or, or I'm sorry, the uh, DOJ charge against him. Because the charge is that he knew he lost, but he lied to defraud the people. That's the, that's the DOJ's charge. So why did we do Stop the Steal? Why did anyone go to January 6th? Why is anyone sitting in jail? Why did anything bad happen to anybody? Why did everyone get censored? Why is everything bad that has happened to the people that are involved, why did that need to happen if you're just going to walk it all back and say, oh, I lost? Well, it would have been good to know that before 1,600 people got charged. It would have been good to know that before I had all my money frozen, put on a no-fly list, banned from everything, lost all banking and payment processing. Would have been good to know that before I... You know, in 2017, dedicated my life to this as an 18-year-old in college. Just feels like a big ripoff. And don't get me wrong, I'm an adult. I'm not, it's not whining. I'm not complaining about it. I'm saying you can't say those things for that reason. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't regret anything. And we all make our choices. And, and look, it didn't work out. It is what it is. So I'm not saying, I'm not mad saying I want those years back. I want those decisions back. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that just goes to show what a tremendous betrayal it is. It's just such a callous indifference to the sacrifices that his supporters made on his behalf. Well, there you have it. Our buddy Nick Fuentes, one of Trump's staunch supporters, the one that was at January the 6th was stopped to steal, been advocating and even got to go to the White House with Kanye West and hang out with Trump. And now he's deflated. He's disgusted because Trump told on himself. And here's Nick Fuentes. He's disgusted. And we've talked about how the Lord has been exposing people as of late. As we've talked about it, he's not done. It's only getting started. He is on the move because there's been people that have started up ministries lying in his name. They continue to have these ministries going about lying in his name. There's evangelicals that have been deceived by pastors that have been lying in his name. And God is not happy. And here we have it right now. The, it's out. The, the cat is out the bag. He is out. And, and what are you going to say? They're going to try to make excuses, many people, and things like that. But this is one of his main staunch supporters. He was, you many of you that's followed me over the years, I've showed you this, several of the clips of him where he just was so excited. And if you don't believe me, let's look at one of his more exciting videos talking about Trump. And, and, and before you see it, for those of you that don't know about Nick, he's a white nationalist. He's a, a racist. He's a conspiracy theorist. He's you name it all. He's that. But let's just look so that way for those of you that are new that you see. This is my mission. This is my mission statement. I'm announcing it early. My mission for 2024 is to raise an army of at least 1,000 Groypers that will infiltrate Capitol Hill and the Trump administration as staffers and bureaucrats. I'm putting myself to work. And I believe this will be the work of the foundation and the work of this show and the movement going forward. People ask, what are we doing? And in the midterms, we fielded candidates and things like that. I've recognized my role. I've got an audience of young people. I'm respected. I'm a role model. And I've got an audience of energetic, zealous, Christian, American patriots. Pick your first family. Would you like a woman president? I, I want a female president with a black son-in-law and some manlet, bald, cuck husband versus the God Emperor of mankind and the son, Alexander. 
You take your pick. You tell me which one you'd prefer. Is it a little bit racist? Yeah, it is. Oh my goodness. She openly loves her husband, Joshua Jackson. I loves me some Joshua Jackson. You see that? Some of his excitement, his mockery and his hate as well. That's who, this is who he is. He's deflated. I, I have another clip here I could show you where, in fact, let, let me just show it to you. Where he's talking, where he is really deflated. Where his energy has gone because he's just so disappointed that Trump has done this. But Trump 2024, I'm like terrified of Trump winning in November because it feels like Trump wins in November and then everything that we fought for gets rewritten. And in 2016, I was so excited. Can't wait for November. Trump's going to win. We're going to take the country back. But I really believed. I was so into it. I was like, he's going to save Western civilization. This, this is, we're going to take back America because, <laughs> you know, I, I've been on the ride for almost 10 years. It's the intro to my show, America First, Stop the Steal. January 6th defined such a huge part of my life. <laughs> and it's all for nothing. That's how it feels. And and now this time around, last time it felt like it was going to be the big victory. We take everything back. And this time it feels like I, I don't even care. It's so low energy. It's so lame. And not only am I not looking forward to it, I'm dreading it. I and as you see, evangelicals has been played like a fiddle. I'm going to make a video specific, another, I got one video that's done that I, 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 I dealing with pastors. That one is on, I'll be on hold for a moment. And then I'm going to deal with one that I, based upon this and this evangelicals being played in such the way that they are. Uh, we're going to talk a little more about that because I've been putting some stuff together in my notes. For those of you who know, I got, I have the notes. And this is where we are. Evangelicals. There's so many people like Marcus Rogers. As you see here, as you see, grinning. As we look at, matter of fact, let, as you see, that's a picture of him at the Capitol. Let's look at him at the Capitol. And then over here marching to the Capitol. We'll get back with you in a minute. Love you, be blush. And that's him hanging out. He's one of many people that call themselves Christians showed up to the Capitol off of a lie. Y'all that have been following me, I have said it. I told you that anybody that calls himself a Christian, that has any type of spiritual discernment and know that, this, that is following the lead of the Holy Spirit, would know you had no business going to the Capitol because the Holy Spirit is not the author of confusion He's not going to lead you into something that is mistruth, something that is going to be chaotic like that and, and, and that, for, for that specific reason because Trump was standing up there doing this. And Mike Pence, I hope you're going to stand up for the good of our Constitution and for the good of our country. And if you're not, I'm going to be very disappointed in you, I will tell you right now. I'm not hearing good stories. So let's walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. Mike Pence didn't have the courage to do what should have been done to protect our country and our Constitution, giving states a chance to certify a corrected set of facts, not the fraudulent or inaccurate ones which they were asked to previously certify. U.S. demands the truth. Lying, as you can see. And he's continued to push this lie. He's put people in place. People have lost it all because of one man. They have lost their livelihoods, a la Rudy Giuliani's and, and all of these other people that have faced charges for promoting the fake elector. And fortunately, there was some people that actually resigned and left. There's a reason why all of these people, dozens of people, 
are no longer part of his, they, they didn't even want to endorse him and be part of his staff and walked away from this man. There's a reason why Mike Pence, even though we know Pence shouldn't have went down that road. He confesses to be a Christian, things like that. But he got in bed with the devil. And Mike Pence had no business going down that road. He knew better. But I don't know. I guess he thought he could tame. See, that's the danger. Sometimes, you know, you it'll be just like you dating somebody. You're a Christian and you're dating somebody. And you know they're not saved. And they're doing things that you know they're not saved. And things like that. But for some reason, we think that we can change people. And we're in the scripture tells us, do not be un unequally yoked with an unbeliever. And we will do that. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't have friends that are unsaved and things like that. But, you know, when it comes to being in the bond of marriage, that's a big deal. And you should not be marrying somebody that is unsaved. Because, you know, light and darkness, that's a big issue. And that's a whole dating message or so. That we, we, we won't talk about here. But Mike Pence got in bed with this and things like that. I, I, I pray that he's talked to the Lord over his time and repented to, uh, uh, or whatever. But you haven't heard from him. He tried to run, but it, it was too late because evangelicals latched themselves on to this lie and got themselves so caught up that people, just regular people have been run off and things like that. But you, it's a, your own vice president. Don't even endorse you. Don't even stand by you. Your wife is in hiding and don't even come out, even though we know what it's about with her. It's about money and things like that. But this is where we are. And evangelicals, you got evangelical people that are setting up here and they're making videos promoting still the guy. And, and which tells that, that we're going to deal with that because they're promoting a guy that Admit it to lie. This is a this is a, a federal offense. This guy right here has given the DOJ, just like Nick Fuentes said, more ammunition for him to be more in trouble with the law. And any evangelical that has latched onto this lie, you may not be in trouble with the law like Trump was, could find himself in trouble and possibly locked up in jail. But you know what? You're in trouble spiritually. The spiritual God's law of setting up there and abandoning the truth. That's what you're going to be in trouble for. Because you failed to use discernment. You went about selfishness. You did not sit there and, and you went down rabbit holes of conspiracies with these folks. And here we are as God is pulling the veils and op opening the curtains as we've been talking about. And now you're starting to see more and more. He's not done. He's not done. Ministries are going to be crumbling more and more. People are going to become tumbling down. Their false ministries and gods that they've worshipped are going to be coming down. We talked about Robert Jeffress. We talked about him where he was sitting there and got a Trump shrine in his churches. We talked about that. All of this chaos off of one man. And a man that has continues to, he's in decline. He's, he's, he's like he's losing his, losing his bearings. But he's telling on himself more and more exposure. And we give glory to God, though. We give glory to God because we want people to be delivered from the hands of the enemy, the father of lies, which is Satan himself. That's what we want. Too many people and families have been destroyed because of one man. And one man only that have that allowed the evangelicals that where they put oh, it was 80 some percent or so evangelicals that put this man in the power. And then they turned right around and almost did it in 2020. And then they do. They go about it again during the primary after they know everything and still do it. Some people are hard headed. And you know what? We're going to pray that, you know, the sooner Mr. Trump is out of the picture and this whole MAGA thing is out of the picture, the sooner the Republican Party is going to have to rebuild from the ground up. And of course, the Democrat Party, is they've got their own issues, too, and they've got some things that they need to work on. But they don't walk. You know, they got a lot of things to work on, too, as we would say, because both parties got issues. But 
the Republican Party is the party that always want to hold the banner of family values and, 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 and Christendom and all of these types of things. It's not that anymore. That, that left when Trump came on the scene. It left. They, they're more so the really far ones that are out there trying to promote a theocracy and take us down a road to no return uh, in a different way that has nothing to do with the Christ that we have read in the scriptures. So that's what they're trying to do. And, it, and it's going to have to be uh, blown up and, and rebuilt. And it only can happen. And, and the churches are going to have to rebuild many of them from within. Many pastors need to be excused. If they don't want to repent, they need to go. You need to leave that church. If they, if they were latched onto this kind of lies and pushed this conspiracies and all of that kind of stuff, if they don't re truly repent and come before the congregation in the nation, especially some of these bigger ones, and repent, you need to leave the church. You need to leave because otherwise these folk, they need to be removed. You're going to have to start up a whole new generation, just like the children of Israel when they're hard-headed and wandering in the wilderness. New generations had to come up. That's what's going to have to happen as far as with the body of Christ. It is going to have to have some do-overs here. So we'll continue to call it out, continue to talk about the issues the church run away from, take the devil head on, punch him right between the chops, evangelism for God's channel. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.